My name is Peter Goetje. I'm a director of the Nordic Cochrane Center in Copenhagen and professor of research design and analysis at the University of Copenhagen. In January 2014, I wrote an article in a major newspaper in Denmark, which in English would be a psychiatry gone astray. And I actually translated it into English later. It's up on some international websites. And in this article, I described 10 myths in psychiatry that psychiatrists use, but which are wrong, and which partly coerce patients into continuing taking drugs that they don't like taking. For example, this hoax about you have a chemical imbalance in your brain, and now we will fix it with a drug, just like uh, diabetes patients get insulin. They use this to persuade the patients to take drugs they would rather not take, and which harms them in the long run. So uh, these psychiatric drugs, some of them may have a, a beneficial effect in the short term, but they are definitely harmful in the long term, and probably all of them uh, cause permanent brain damage. And also here, the psychiatrists, they use myths because they tell the patients that depression and schizophrenia destroys your brain, so now we will get a drug for you that will prevent this brain damage. I have seen these studies. It has never been documented that the disease leads to brain damage, but it has been documented that the drugs cause brain damage. So it's wrong. So I exposed that uh, and I, I even concluded that, um, that since the psychiatrists and general practitioners also, they cannot use these drugs that are a double-edged sword that may be beneficial in acute situations, but people, people become dependent on them, just like on street drugs, so they have difficulty getting off them. So therefore, in the long run, these, the way these drugs are used today cause more harm than good. So it would be better for us if the drugs didn't exist because doctors can't handle them. And they tell the patients when they get abstinence symptoms, it's your disease that has come back, which it not often is, it's usually abstinence symptoms. And then they continue for life. Um, so uh, some months later, I became quite unpopular because of this newspaper article. And um, I was stabbed in the back, you might say, by the whole establishment, including the Minister of Health, about that I could say that it would be better we didn't have the drugs and so on. But everyone overlooked deliberately that that was not what I said in the article. I said we should use these drugs very, very little, and mostly in acute situations and with a plan for tapering them off in order to prevent this long-term harm. I also said that the way we use them today does more harm than good. So then it would be better we didn't have them. But of course, I would prefer that we had them and that doctors were better in using them. So that was a tough time uh, this, um, this spring. But uh, now I'm going to a conference in Los Angeles where people share my views that uh, the way we currently use these drugs is harmful. So we are going to discuss how we can create a better psychiatry. Antidepressant drugs are used a lot. In our country, they sell so much, so every Dane can be in treatment for six years of the, their life. Every one of us. This is not healthy. And uh, if you put something in the placebo, which was done in the old days, then there is no effect of antidepressant drugs. So what you measure in these clinical trials is mainly bias, that you, you think they are blinded, but because of the side effects, dry mouth and so on, many patients and doctors will know, is that patient on active drug or placebo? And then psychologically, we want to be kind. So then if a patient or doctor knows that, yes, that patient is on active drug, then they will tend to exaggerate the benefit. 
and, and vice versa on placebo. So if you put something in the placebo that gives people dry mouth, so they can't guess, guess what they're on, the effect disappears. And um, so it can really be doubted whether antidepressant drugs have any effect at all. But what they do is that they make people dependent so that they go on for years. And I have seen data from Finland that people who were put on an antidepressant drugs, even five years later, almost half of them were still taking an antidepressant drug. And they also took an antidepressant drug in the intermediate years. So they took it year after year, half of them. And in the old days, uh, psychiatrists said that depression is a self-limiting disease. Even without treatment, most people get better. So quite few cases become chronic. Now the psychiatrists say that depression has changed. It's another disease because now it's more chronic. And what they don't realize is they created this with their drugs. This is insane.